Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a pre-Happy New Year to you. Uh, just wanted to come on here this morning and just kind of have a little conversation. Uh, I've been feeling the Lord has wanted me to bring some stuff out to, to folks today. And uh, I've had this uh, uh, on my heart for a little while now. And uh, it just appears that, um, well, it's in fact um, that so many, so many religions today and, and churches and and people have a misconception of who Jesus is and how to serve him. And, and what we have before us today is churches today. And people, um, unfortunately, are very turned off by what they see in churches today. And uh, we put out a video called The Real Jesus. And I, I, would, I would admonish or just... Um, advise and and even encourage you to go and uh, check that check that video out um but anyhow many feel that they're serving jesus today but they really don't know the jesus that the bible talks about um we many are being taught uh, the apostles doctrine the letters uh we we think that the the accounts of jesus are, are some cute little story and, and this is who he is. And then, then the letters to the church um, is the only way we live that Jesus. And that is not true. That is not true. Um, when the apostles say that, that, that if any man preach any other gospel, what is the gospels? The gospels are the, the life and, and, and happenings and, and, and life of Jesus, what he taught, the spirit in which he taught it. Um, I put out a little thing on on Facebook the other day about you know we've got we've got preachers <laughs> and teachers that are that are saying that the you know when you look in the letters um, not everything in the letters are a commandment now if it cannot be backed up and and, and and joined with with the spirit the Bible said the letter killeth and the spirit giveth life. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth. There is um, that spirit of Jesus. There was one reason. Uh, when I say that reason, it's, it's rolled up into a lot of reasons, really. But that reason for us to have the Holy Ghost is to make it to heaven, to navigate not only through this life, but through the pages of the Bible, the 66 books, and, and more so the 27 books of the New Testament, which a testament is the will of God in Jesus Christ after he passed and died and, and rose and, 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 and came back in the form of the Holy Ghost to lead and guide us. It's our navigation system. It's exactly what the Lord has given us, sent back to us so that we can navigate this thing. Not only this life, but the words. He said, search the scriptures for in them you think ye have eternal life. There is that that's some uh profound statement. And we know that that through and if you did any any deep search of where the scriptures came from and all this, uh, you know we have to prove out those things. And that's why the spirit of the Holy Ghost, the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and the mind, uh, is is what the Lord guides us with. And and we, the Bible said, when the Holy Ghost has come, he will testify of me. So no one else will be glorified. No one else will be lifted up. And that is really where we want to go today. And in what I feel that the Lord is, is wanting me to put forth today to, to, to those that would listen. And uh, I just pray and I just ask that, that you would give Jesus that supreme place in your life. Not only the word. Now, many people, I, I can come to you and I can say, oh, well, this is the word of God and this is what it says and this is what it says. And and and, and look here, I could go pick in peace and create my own little religion here, which is what many have done. And 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 I can create my own little 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 
world here, my own space, and, 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 and try and bring followers to that space. That's not what we're doing today. That's not what I care about. I don't care about my world. It's about Jesus. Amen. And, and it's about you knowing and finding Jesus, not just hearing about him. Amen. And, and the whole world just, just the day ago has, has, has focused on the birth of Jesus. But you know, everybody looks at the babe in the manger, but that wasn't the gift he came. That was just the, the package that it came through. Amen. He had to come and, and, and abolish sin, death, hell, and the grave through the body of that child, which grew. Amen. And, 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 and he taught. Amen. And he showed us the face of God. Amen. The, the, he was the face of God. Amen. When, when, when Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, he said, have I not been so long time with you, Philip, that you can say, show me the Father. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. This is who he is. And, and, and we now have a glimpse of God. We have a better view of God than what Moses was given when God said, he could see his hinder parts. Amen. And, and, and so let me get on with, with, with where we're going here this morning. I, I could just praise and glorify the Lord all day long here. Amen. And I appreciate every, his word is truth. Amen. But, but I want you to know today that, that Jesus, if Jesus isn't in the picture, if he isn't the, the top, amen, if he isn't the supreme of your life, Amen. Then, then you have nothing. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care who else you please. If Jesus isn't the pinnacle of your thoughts, if he is not the pinnacle of your life, and he is not your closest and best friend, I don't know why you'd want to go to heaven because that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. So anyhow, <clears throat> I'm just going to show this here, but but while we're on that subject, Jesus, right? So if you were to look, if you see here, you see Jesus in a box here. And I don't mean in a box, but uh, the account of Jesus, the Gospels, amen, the Gospels of Jesus Christ, the the what he did, what he said, uh, his feelings, his, his his the spirit by which he did the things that he did. Okay, if, if that's that's you, if, if you put that number one, if your account of Jesus, the Gospels, is number one in your life, then, then you must fit everything else after to that. That is the golden standard. That is by which we will be judged. That is his words, amen, that not one jot or tittle, he said, would pass until all be fulfilled. He said, my words will judge you in the last day. Amen. He did not say Paul's words, and, and, and we, could, we could go into a, a, a scripture and all that, and I, I'm not going to go there. What I'm saying is true to you this morning, even in any arguments that anyone else might want to bring to pass, it all goes back to Jesus. And I don't care what anyone says after Jesus, and how they've interpreted Jesus, it's still back to Jesus. And if you can't check this box and say yes, and say that everything said by Jesus is gold standard and all must match word and spirit by which he said these things and done these miracles and, and, and these, these uh, acts, according to Matthew 20, 25, and 26, according to Luke 22, 25, and 26, amen, where he said "There's, it's not going to be so among you. We're not going to have a hierarchy in my kingdom, amen. So when you, if you check that, and you must adhere to what Jesus said and by the spirit that he said it, if not, you have said no to Jesus. You said no, and you went over to, say, Paul. Um, and this is where many religions are today. They have chosen to say that the letters beyond the gospel of Jesus, the things that Jesus said, and by which the Spirit he said them and done those things, can be overwritten by the epistles or the apostles, the letters to the churches. 
Amen. To like Ephesus, the writings of Paul. Amen. What you have done is you said, well, Jesus, that was about this, but Paul or, or Peter or others, and, and, and when we talk Paul or Peter, and I've made this point, and please go back and listen to the videos, and, and you'll see how I give you scripture reference for everything I say, amen, which is a lot more than probably what you're hearing over the pulpits today, because you're not being taught. You're not given absolute uh, evidence by what's being said across there. And it's not being in context. But but today I'm telling you that men is between you and Christ through ministry is, is what many are teaching from the epistles, from the letters uh, to and from the churches. They have created a two-tier system. When Jesus very emphatically says in three occasions, three gospels, that there will not be hierarchy in my kingdom. He said, ye are all brethren. Now, you can't get past that. So, so everything else that you're being taught against that uh, is, there's no way around it. There's, there's no way to, to say, well, you know, I believe that, but, you know, this is, this is, no, no. There's no this is, this is, okay? There's no this is, this is. That's not word of God. That's not validated. It's not authored by Jesus, and it is simply false. Amen. And, and, and so when we look at that, the account of the Gospels, we were talking about Jesus. Amen. Neither is there salvation in any other. Does this not ring a bell? When they try to teach Paul, when they try to teach Peter, amen, Acts 2.38, that was a point in time that Jesus said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. That was the formula for salvation for entrance into the kingdom. John 1 or 3, 1 through 8. Read it. Amen. This validates. This came from Jesus. It didn't happen by Peter. It came from Jesus. It was validated by Peter through the Holy Ghost that Jesus moved on him that day and what was prophesied to Peter upon this rock. Not Peter wasn't the rock. It wasn't about Peter. It was about the Father revealing to Peter who Jesus was and the spirit of the Holy Ghost, which God was going to send back. And that is, as I said in the beginning, he, Jesus, the babe, was only the transport vehicle. Amen. That, that the Holy Ghost... This is the promise. This is the comforter. This is the rest wherewith he will cause the weary to rest. The comforter, amen. This is what the Lord gift to man is, to guide us, amen. And also to guide us through the scripture that we have today. Not to look at it and be a robot and say, oh, this, that. Because if you did that, you'd never find God anyhow. So, when I talk about this this morning, it is Jesus. If you take your eyes off of Jesus, you will be like Peter. You will fall into the water. You will no longer be in a miraculous life. Amen. All right. So one of the other things that I wanted to bring forth here, the weakness of man. The weakness of man is power. They want to control. We are built in the image. We were, we were built like God, in the image of God. It would be no strange things to have some of his characteristics. Amen. He is all power. Amen. And, and when we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteousness, righteous, that, that will help us through this. But we also have an adversary, which is the devil, who is going to tempt us into things just like in the garden to to draw and pull on those things that that uh wants us to reject god wants us to reject his authority and uh, usurp it ourselves. and this is where we find our religions today amen and, and 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 when you find that 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 man is constantly wanting to pull you from god and that is exactly what is happening today but it's done so sneaky that we don't recognize it because they keep saying Jesus over here, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But you know what? Their actions are not Jesus. 
They're not acting like Jesus. They're not coming humble. They're not being the servant that Jesus said they must be. Amen. So when you look at that, and, and I want to bring forth, you know, the Bible said that, uh, that and, and, and I'm going to read it here, but I want, want to read Jude first. Jude 1 and 9 said, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring his nation. Now what I'm bringing this up for, because when we go to Deuteronomy 34 and 5, the Bible said, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Now, you'll, you'll understand why we're going here. And he buried him, verse 6, 34 and 6 in Deuteronomy, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab. Who did? God did. Over against Beth Peor. Peor. But no man, no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. God hid it. You know why he hid it? Because everybody... The Jews, the, the, the children of Israel, would have shrined that thing. And they would have been idolatry. There would have been idols. They would have they would have put all kinds of things. And you know how, how it happens today. Amen. They, they would have flowers and, 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 and statues and everything else depicting him. God wasn't going to allow that to happen to Moses. Because it would throw the children of Israel into idolatry. So God prevented that from happening. That is why. So the, the point today is keeping Jesus, Jesus. It's keeping him number one. It's keeping him first. What is the first commandment? So we have to maintain that Jesus, his authority, his power is the only power. And no matter what, Peter's words, if Peter's words did not line up to John 3, 1 through 8, if there wasn't correlation, if there wasn't Joel 2 and 28, if there wasn't Isaiah 28 and 11, amen, if there, if there wasn't the, the with, with, with stammering lips and another tongue, and, and God, Jesus himself told him to tarry until they be endued from power from one eye. If all these things didn't come together to, to lift up and to support what Jesus said, it would be nothing. It wouldn't matter. But these things all fit together and we can, we can validate those things. And when you can validate them through who? Jesus. Jesus. Through Jesus. When we can validate these things through Jesus, that's when we can be assured. And the Holy Ghost confirming, the Bible said, the Holy Ghost, his spirit confirming the word. If the Holy Ghost doesn't confirm the words, that Bible means nothing in our salvation today in the new covenant with Jesus Christ. That's why the spirit he gave. That's the gift to navigate through these things, through the religions, through the deceivers of man, through the words and, 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 and the, 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 the ways of each spirit. One spirit, one faith, one baptism. Amen. There's just one. There's not two. There's not one for ministry and one for the saints. And when you see that the fivefold ministry are for the perfecting of the saints, that is not a given. That is not A commandment that is not that matter of fact, it has to be interpreted wrong because my Bible, my Jesus said the Holy Ghost would teach you. It would lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. And it would bring to remembrance whatsoever I have said. It is my navigation. The Bible said the prophets and the apostles bring us to Christ. If nothing points you to Christ, Christ is God incarnate in a body that was, that was taken to a tree to sacrifice for our sins. Came back, his spirit is to lead and guide us. 
And if you can't speak directly to God, you miss the new covenant. You miss what Jesus brought. Because he said, I will be in you. I will write my words on the tables of your heart. Do you not understand that? Because this here, he's not going to come through man to teach you how to live for God. He brought the spirit. So this whole idea that you have to obey them and have the rule over you takes you back across the grace line. We are not living in the old law anymore. And until you come to those grips and until you come to Jesus, Jesus, the Bible said it brought us to Jesus. After that, it is all Jesus. We do not do the law. Acts 15, I could go into it. I, I'm not going to go into it today. A validation, verification, scripture, and you pray and the spirit will confirm for you. What I'm saying is true through the word and the confirmation of the Holy Ghost. You seek him. He will be found, he said. Amen. Let every man seek God for wisdom, which God giveth liberally and upbraideth not. Amen, the Bible says. Amen. So I want you to understand the spirit by those that are teaching you, that are saying they are Jesus, they are of Jesus. Amen. Those people, if they are not pointing you to Jesus, not only by just mentioning his name, not only by reading a few scriptures, but if they are not humble, if they are not uh, being your servant, they are not of the same Jesus that this scripture is giving us. Amen. And when we look at John 8 and 24, amen, it says that, that or, uh, I believe it's 8 and 24, if I can read my own writing, uh, a murderer from the beginning was the devil. And, and, and he wants to kill who? Who does he want to kill? He wants to kill hope. He wants to kill hope in who? One. That is Jesus. Amen. I could go into all these things. Jesus has all power. I could go John 1 and 1. We could read all that. Many of you already know these things. But if you read them, amen, and if you apply them and you quit allowing other people, in this case, many is Paul. Many is Peter. Many is the apostles. They call themselves apostolic because they're moving away from Jesus and making man. Who changed God into the creature and loved the creature more than the creator? It does not the thing that was formed. Amen. Uh, is it not less than the thing that formed it? Amen. Uh, Genesis 2 and 7. God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed life into his nostrils. And man became a living soul. Who did that? God did. How do we know God today? In the face of Jesus. He is the express image of God. Amen. So Romans 9 and 19 said the thing formed. How is it going to say or reply us against God and say, why hast, thou, that, why hast thou made me thus? How can the potter say, how can the clay say to the potter? Amen. Uh, and, and we talk about the, that man has, has been deceived. Amen. By who? Man. Man is deceived more in the counts of the Bible by man than the devil himself. Read it. Look at it. You'll see that it is warned of man deceiving you more than the devil himself. Because man has this insatiable appetite to be ruler, to, to, to be over someone. And the Lord said that. And I'm telling you, if you read, it's in three accounts of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Amen. And, and I've told you that 20, Matthew 20, 25, 26. Read the story up and below. Go to Luke 22, 25, and 26. Read the story, two different accounts, two different writers. Speaking of what God said, there will not be no hierarchy. There's not going to be anyone greater in my kingdom. And yet, the, uh, the, the hierarchy in churches today is exactly that. There is a two-tier. God did not give ministers one, one Holy Ghost and, and saints another. The perfecting of the saints is the job of the Holy Ghost. And you can say what you want, but if it doesn't match what Jesus said and by the Spirit he brought it, if it, if it contradicts 
If you can't make it fit Jesus, you must not do it. You must not believe it because you are being moved off to man. And I won't even go into the writings of, of, of the scripture and the manuscripts that came because that would give you a little more knowledge of what I'm talking about today. Amen. So if the gospel, my point is, if the gospel, if Jesus Christ, if Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in error, everything Paul, everything Peter, everything James, John, Luke, everybody else, everything that is outside of those gospels must be wrong as well. So if we don't have the gospels, my friend, if, if, if those are not true and you can't confirm in, in through the Holy Ghost, every word and, the, and by, the, by the word and the spirit that Jesus said it in, if you cannot confirm that, amen, God is alive. He's not dead. The Bible said the, the, the letter killeth, but the spirit, it gives life. And you must use that as your navigation, not man, not some pastor. They are not between you and Jesus. I don't care what the rest of anything says. If you put man between you and Jesus, you've just stepped back over into the old law because Jesus said he became the high priest. He died once and for all for our sins. There is no more altar. Amen. What is the altar? What is, what is, what is the praise? It's the fruit of our lips. That's our sacrifice as God wants. A humble and a contrite heart. Someone that, that knows who Jesus really is and what your, what your position is with Jesus. Amen. And being a, living a holy life like him. Amen. And, and, and living a consecrated life, uh, eschewing sin and evil and living a holy lifestyle before the Lord. Amen. And, and, and I'm not telling you that, that the, the, the epistles, the letters, amen, John and, and, and 1 John and Jude and, and, and Ephesians and First and Second Thessalonians, First and 2 Peter, I'm not telling you Ephesians and, and, and the Corinthians and all these other letters are totally wrong. I'm telling you if they do not jive with the gospel and what Jesus only said, but through that spirit that he said it, Amen. If you read Acts, it is not commandments. It is not commandments. It is, it is telling you what and how the apostles was trying to move forward. Amen. In this of what Jesus taught them. And I'm telling you this morning, you've got to stay with Jesus. And if you go outside that, my friend, you're going to, you're going to lose. You're going to lose in the end. You're not going to have eternal life. And I can tell you that this morning. Amen. And I just asked you, to, to seek God. Amen. The Bible said, and no marvel or no surprise. Amen. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So it, it's not a big thing. Amen. It, it shouldn't shock you that, that those affected by him would, 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 would bring Jesus in another manner. They're going to alter things. Amen. They're going to move you away from the gospel. Amen. Of Jesus Christ and your salvation to him. Amen. And then they're going to they're going to tell you you've got to do things. They're going to tell you you got to live by man and you got to live under man. But that is putting yourself back into bondage. Amen. And we are not in bondage in whom the son of man is set free is in free indeed. Even Paul, amen, has said that that he has been taught by no man, but the Lord Amen. And that, that he can do all things, but he doesn't do them. Amen. By, by, by offending someone. So he has put his own constraints to serve Jesus. And we must follow those things that adhere and that are part of and in concert with not only the words of Jesus and the account of Jesus in the Gospels, but that spirit by which he brought that. When you see, and I brought this up the other day about Ananias and Sapphira, and, and, and they want to tell you, and the Bible doesn't actually say that the Holy Ghost killed them for holding back money from the land purchase that they, that they sold their land and didn't give all of it back. The Bible doesn't say that the Holy Ghost killed them, but this will be preached to you, that to put fear in you. And the Bible said, you don't give by constraint. In the new way, in the new covenant, the new testament. You don't give by constraint. Don't give by constraint. And the Bible said that. And, and But they want to preach tithing. And tithing is a law. The law says you must do it. That's constraint. And my friend on his face, 
And you can go back again to the videos. If you are putting in those things, if you are ad adhering to the old law, you are rejecting Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. And I pray you have an awesome new year and you turn a new leaf and you get closer to Jesus and Jesus becomes the apple of your eye, not the detractors, not those that would pull you from him, but that would pull you into him. Amen. You, you can, you can read and, and they will try and pull you away into, into other realms that is not Jesus. But my friend, listen to these videos and prayerfully pray and ask God, amen, to confirm his word to you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen.